Hey, Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here with a social studies lesson for you today. You know, it's very interesting in that as I was finishing up my research for this lesson, uh, November 8th came around. And as you all know, uh, November 8th is when we found out um, that our next president of the United States would be Donald J. Trump. And like uh, many election cycles in the past, um, a lot of people were very happy and a lot of people were very upset about the outcome. And it seems, it seems uh, because of the, the, the huge media coverage that uh, this election cycle was very much unlike any other election cycle. And um, again, a lot of people happy and a lot of people very upset, disappointed and fearful. And definitely when it comes to feelings, uh, your feelings are neither right nor, nor wrong. They're, they're your feelings. So um, again, that is, that is up to you uh, to make up your own mind based on the facts of any given situation. But I want to, uh, because I, I feel that this is very, this lesson is very appropriate. I want to remind you that uh, throughout history, uh, we've been really surprised because change has come through people we would least expect it. And so uh, hopefully that, that gives you maybe just a, a little bit of hope for the future of the United States of America under the leadership of Donald Trump. Um, I know that's, that's still a, a shocking prospect uh, for many people to wrap their minds around, but that's the reality that we're living in. And so I want to transition to the, what we're going to talk about today. A lot of you have been interested in the Jim Crow laws. And so uh, we're going to take a, a journey in talking about the Jim Crow laws and, and learning more about the Jim Crow laws. And so today, specifically, we're going to talk about President Harry Truman and the Jim Crow laws. Really, the beginning of the end of the Jim Crow laws, in my opinion. So with that being said, let's get started. President Harry Truman, a president from the great state of my state, Missouri, he was a flawed man. And as we learned about him, we learned that one of his flaws was his insensitivity towards others who didn't look like him. But like many people who had these views uh, when growing up, that, that was all he knew. Uh, we lay, it was later determined uh, through a letter to his wife that he freely uh, used the N-word. Um, he was intolerant of Jewish people, Chinese people, and Japanese people as well. But it's very interesting that this was the man who would desegregate the military. And in my opinion, he would really give the, the civil rights movement a lot of momentum. In 1952, uh, Truman gave a speech in Harlem and he explained his conversion, how he uh, was able to come around and understand the need for the desegregation of the military. He said that, now many people have wondered how I came to have such a deep interest in civil rights. I want to tell you about that. Right after World War II, religious and racial intolerance began to show up just as it did in 1919. There were a good many incidents of violence and friction, but two of them in particular made a very deep impression on me. One was when a Negro veteran still wearing his country's uniform was arrested and beaten and blinded. And not long after that, two Negro veterans with their wives lost their lives at the hands of a mob. So those two incidents had a profound impact on President Truman. Even though he grew up with those bigoted beliefs, he still understood that, you know, it's not right that African Americans who served their country in World War I and in World War II should come home and face such discrimination and persecution. So let's swing back to July of 1946, when Truman receives a letter informing him of the incident of the soldier being beaten and blinded by a mob. Shortly after hearing about that incident, he appointed a panel of people to serve on the President's Commission on Civil Rights. 
Now, this commission would recommend a, quote, more adequate means and procedures for the protection of the civil rights of the people of the United States. So one year later, this commission would issue a report titled to secure these rights in October of uh, 1947. Now, some of these things that this commission proposed were anti-lynching and anti-poll tax laws. Now, another thing that this commission proposed were four essential rights that every citizen in the United States has a right to. Number one was the right to safety and security. Number two was the right to citizenship and its privileges. Number three was the right to freedom. And number four was the right to equal opportunity. Now, this is groundbreaking stuff right here because this commission has the ear of the president. The president is paying attention. And within the president, there is a bit of a conversion taking place. Civil rights leaders were happy about this and saw an opportunity for change. Now, many of these civil rights leaders were able to talk to Truman. Um, now, these meetings didn't always go as planned and things weren't always as smooth as they could possibly be. As a matter of fact, civil rights leaders floated the idea of possibly African-Americans boycotting serving in the military. Um, and this would be significant because at this time, the Cold War with the Soviet Union is taking place. And the other significant threat, I guess you can call it, was that the African-Americans would switch their vote from Democrat, which Harry Truman was, to Republican. And definitely, Harry Truman being a politician, uh, that definitely caught his attention as well. So not everyone was thrilled with this decision. As a matter of fact, there was dissension amongst people in his own party about possibly desegregating the military. And making matters even more difficult was that 1948 was an election year. So President Truman has been on this journey since about 1946. So, so two years into this journey for him, he still has not desegregated the military as had been talked about for a while at this time. But in early 1948, he started to speak out against Jim Crow, uh, poll taxes, and this would obviously upset those in his party who lived in the South. And flat out, those in the Republican Party opposed desegregation of the military. Uh, many people, and there were no good reasons as to why this was. Uh, Many people simply believe that African Americans were unfit to serve in the military. And unfortunately, uh, top military leaders disagreed with desegregation as well. And it's not easy being president, and, and one must be willing to listen and change. Here is a little bit of a speech that he gave in February of 1948. He says, I recommend, therefore, that the Congress enact legislation at this session directed toward the following specific objectives. One, establishing a permanent commission on civil rights, a joint congressional committee on civil rights and a civil rights division in the Justice Department, which we have today. Two, strengthening existing civil rights statutes. Three, providing federal protection against lynching. Uh, four, more adequately the right protecting more adequately the right to vote. Uh, five, establishing a fair employment practice commission to prevent unfair discrimination in employment. So as you can see, President Truman is moving through. He's traveling. He is on a journey. He's, he's on a journey of, he is on a journey of reformation. He's changing the way he thinks. And that's a good thing. And people can do that. On July 22nd of 1948, he was officially petitioned by his own party to desegregate the military. This is part of a letter that he received from someone within his party. It reads, my dear Mr. President, Americans for Democratic Action respectfully urges you to issue an executive order providing for the abolition of segregation and discrimination in the armed forces of the United States. The platform adopted by the Republican Party in Philadelphia last month stated that, 
quote, we are opposed to the idea of racial segregation in the armed services of the United States. The platform adopted by the Democratic Party in Philadelphia last week reads in part as follows, quote, we highly commend President Harry Truman for his courageous stand on the issue of civil rights. We call upon the Congress to support our president in guaranteeing, in guaranteeing these basic and fundamental rights. And then it goes on, and, and the right of equal treatment in the services in defense of our nation. Four days after receiving this letter, President Truman issues an executive order that would desegregate the military. And again, I don't think the decision to desegregate the military came from someone who grew up with a lot of bigotry in his life. It's a big deal that he was the one who decided to do that. And he came to that conclusion with, with some help, but I truly believe that he went through a transition, he went through a reformation, and he truly believed that it was not right that African Americans who would go to serve their country would have to be subject to discrimination and persecution when they come back home. Well, the rest of the story would be that President Truman would surprisingly, he would win election, uh, would, which would, wouldn't be a surprise is the fact that he won the black vote, obviously. Um, but within Harry Truman's own party, there were two factions. There were two other people who decided to run for president because they were uh, upset with him and they didn't disagree with him in regards to civil rights. So Harry Truman, he was he definitely, he was taking a political gamble by standing up for what he believed in. And again, he dragged his feet a little bit, but eventually he came around and made the correct decision, really, in my opinion, giving the civil rights movement a lot of momentum uh, and paving the way for uh, the work of a lot of, a lot of civil rights leaders to make some amazing things happen in the years to come. Well, that is our social studies lesson for the day. Thank you so much for watching. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools as you chase your vision of success. Also feel free to download the video that goes, download the worksheet that goes along with this video to further your knowledge of Harry Truman and uh, desegregation of the military, attacking Jim Crow. So thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.